Hello and welcome everybody to our next session on the signs of the times and this little booklet on uh, Pope Francis's agenda for the climate change, uh, Our Mother Earth, the Gaia Book of Pope Francis, Climus, Climate Hysteria in the Vatican, October 16, 2019. And we are discussing with Michael Yerk Lisman and Tom Fress of Inquisition Update today. And I want to welcome Michael first. Welcome, Michael. Hello, Brett, and thank you much for the invitation. Hello, also, Jörg and Tom and all the listeners out there. Well, I'm not afraid of the weather in any way. I'm used to that for about 52 years now, and I got an umbrella, and I got thick boots and handkerchiefs and so on. It's it's ab absolutely no problem. So I'm not afraid of the weather because I know that God created the weather in the first place. Why should I be afraid? I'm quite uh, <clears throat> afraid of anybody who is doubting the almighty God, and so I like to hand it over to the next guest yeah uh, it's my turn good morning everybody sure. this is tom from inquisition update glad to be here wonderful to have you tom and yurk yes <clears throat> thank for, thank you all for having the time to come together for another reading that we are going to do today uh in these papers and it's not so much about the reading i mean let's face it these mm. readings are just a basic uh idea giver of what we talk about first a of template, all so to speak a yeah. template yeah yeah right um first and for all we talk about the papacy being the antichrist something that we have been talking about almost unto oblivion especially tom uh, with his ministry inquisition update but still there are so many people out there who don't get it so we have to repeat that and we have to tell the people that when we speak about the Antichrist, that everything that is going on in this world, and I think that is a little bit of a problem many people don't even understand, everything that is going on in this world is anti-Christian. It is materialistic. It has nothing to do with the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with our spiritual health. It has everything to do with our sick-making of our physical bodies in this temporal world. That's it all about. And to drag us all into the material world by worshipping money, worshipping men, worshipping now, and that's the subject of this climate change agenda, worshipping nature, meaning worshipping the creation before the creator. That's what this is all about. The devil is so subtle. Why is he so subtle? Well, because in the Bible it says the serpent was the, uh, more subtle than any other beast in the field. And we know that the serpent is an abbreviation, or is, is, is another word that is used for the devil, Satan, Lucifer. Yeah? First Lucifer, then Satan, then the snake or the serpent, whatever you want to call him. And he is so smart to achieve his goal. And what's his goal? To receive worship from man and every man who is not worshipping him to destroy him from the face of the earth. And not only destroy him physically, but more important, to destroy him spiritually. And therefore he does everything to take away our spiritual mind means take away the word of god that we have to study in to show ourselves approved as it is written in the bible take away the bible so that we cannot be good bereans that measure everything that happens in the world against the bible as it is written in acts chapter 17 verse 11 just let us focus on the material world here and let us never ever understand that we are, as it is written in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, that we are not fighting against flesh, against flesh and blood, but that we are fighting against principalities and powers in high places. The spiritual wickedness, that is what we are fighting. Not the man that is standing opposite of you. Not the man, whether he is a protestant reverend, uh, a preacher, or a Roman Catholic priest, or... Uh, a master of I don't know what in Buddhism and Hinduism and Zoroastrianism and you know all these different religions, that man is not your enemy. It's the spirit 
therein that is your enemy. And that spirit you can only fight with spiritual weapons. And Pope Francis, who is the face of Satan in this earth, because he is the, as he claims himself to be, Vicarius Fili Dei, but he doesn't tell you that he is the um, substitute of the God of this world, as we read in the Bible, which is a uh, a wording that is chosen because man elevates this, uh, Satan to the God of this world, and he is the representative of him here, and everything that he's, he does is only working for to lead us in this temporal world into perdition. And not only in this temporal world, but also spiritually, by taking away the word of God, by taking away the gospel, by taking away all the dogmas that God set in his word, the Holy Bible. That is what it is all about. So we use these papers that we are just going to talk about, only as, as Brett so wonderfully said the word template, to from there to show you that it is all a show and the only thing that we have to do is distract ourselves from it. Be ye separate, saith the Lord, and do not touch the unclean thing. Uh, what's the unclean thing? Well, I tell you, everything in this world is unclean. There's nothing clean in this tainted world by the Antichrist so far. And the more you understand that and the more that you get into a personal relationship with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the better it is for you. And the better it is for you, the better it is for the people around you because you drag them with you, we hope. This is the only thing that we can do. We can only sow seeds, but it is on, it is on God to give the increase on that. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that I'm taking so much time explaining this, but I think it is absolutely necessary that we all understand that we are in a spiritual warfare and that we can only use the material things given to us to tell the people that is the spiritual warfare you have to engage in. So when we are now reading this paper, which is a translation that I did from the German article from this German um, uh, German journalist Geier that we talked about in the other article before, um, that we are just using this template to show you how in this material world the Antichrist wants to take possession of your spiritual life by destroying your spiritual life in the way that God would have you to live it. That's all I have to say for this introduction before I go into the reading, but I think that especially Tom and probably one of the other brothers here on the line on Skype with me have a little comment on what I just said. So please. Well, I'll go first, but uh, I think you pretty well said it. I mean, uh, Satan is using, as the popes have always done throughout history, are using the governments of the world to deceive and to control uh, every man, woman, and child and make them all subjects to the Roman pontiff. Now, that's, that's a, a main tenet of Roman Catholic canon law. It is the divine right... According to Roman Catholic canon law, it is the divine right of the Roman Catholic Pope to make subjects and to rule over every man, woman, and child on the planet. And if he has to do that under the guise of a global government, a global civil government, all the better. Because the Pope, all by himself, uh, doesn't have a chance of ruling the whole world. He has to have the assistance of all the governments of the world. And, and, uh, and of course, they use fear. Uh, we're, we're faced, according to them, the liars in the governments and in the papacy. We're, 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 we're uh, made fearful that uh, we're living in a, on a dying planet as because the world is overpopulated and inefficiently using its resources, and we're... We've conducted unsustainable development, and uh, we have to have a, a world government to save the planet. And they've elevated uh, the creation above that of God, and uh, it's all because Satan is ruling from uh, the Vatican and the governments of the world and the press, uh, the news. Everyone is, is, is uh, promoting this uh, agenda of fear. And as to the degree that the world is responding to it, they are becoming uh, vassals of the papacy. And it, it's, it's hard to describe uh, these things to people that have never 
heard about it. I mean, uh, we're, we're listed as uh, conspiracy theorists and all, but we have a sure word of prophecy. We have the Bible, and the Bible predicts all of this, and history attests to its truth. The papacy, during its uh, heydays, ruled the world through the civil governments uh, of the world that served him. And uh, it's no different today than it was then. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Uh, you know, in a way, it is like when Jesus went up into heaven, the people said, um, God has left the building. Now we are left for ourselves, and we have to take care of ourselves. We have to take care of our own salvation. That's what the Antichrist wonderfully teaches by the sacraments of the Holy Catholic Church. Without those sacraments, you will not be saved anyway. And uh, God is not here anymore. He doesn't take care of us. So we have to take care of, first of all, ourselves, and second of all, of the whole quote-unquote planet. Because otherwise we are doomed into extinction. And that's why we are going to start a new action that is called Extinction Rebellion, which is one of the formats that the people out there use to um, fear-monger about the uh, quote-unquote climate climate change that is not going to happen anyway <clears throat> very well said tom so if there's no nobody else saying something then i want to go into the article here to read this um of uh the german journalist guy that i translated into english is that all right sure yeah. you know i've got a little scripture that i think michael said a couple broadcasts ago that fits perfectly with your introduction yerk mm-hmm it's from 1 John chapter 5, verses 18 through 21. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. That's a very important last sentence you just read. Keep yourself from idols, because... Everything that the Antichrist is all about, everybody, everything that this teaching of global warming is all about, everything this book from Pope Francis that he in the picture is, is all about, is about idolatry. That's it. It's a break of the second commandment. And the recompense for that, well, you can read that among other places in the Bible, probably, but very, very special, you can read that in the first chapter of Romans, especially in the verses between verse 52, uh, 15 sorry, and 32, means the end of the chapter. But now let's go into this little article. This was translated, as you can see, on October 16, 2019. So it's a little bit more than a month ago today, because we started this already a, a few weeks ago, these series. And um, it is called Our Mother Earth, the Gaia Book of Pope Francis, which you can see here, Nostra Madre Terra, Our Mother Earth, that is the book called, Climate History in Vatican. And of course, this um, journalist, as we already understood from previous readings, now we go into his own reading, we understand that he writes from a Catholic point of view. He is not a Bible-believing Christian, uh, because there are no Bible-believing Christians in the mainstream media, as you probably all know. So just consider that when I read to you, and this is probably why Tom will interrupt me many, many times, but I'm not hesitating uh, to call him out for that, please Tom, whenever you have a comment on anything that I make here that is, of course, anti-biblical, then please interrupt me. I'm looking forward to your interruptions very, very much. So it says here, the new book by Pope Francis for a, quote, global conversion to save the planet, unquote. Yeah. Rome, quote, unquote, our mother earth, yeah? Nostra Madre Terra. It's the title of the new book by Pope Francis, which will be published on October 24th, shortly before the end of the Amazon Synod in Italy and France. And we spoke about the Amazon Synod 
a time ago, as you remember in previous broadcasts on this. And now this is of course finished in the meantime. The book, he says, consists of 30 short meditations on the eco and cyclical Laudato Si, published by Pope Francis in June 2015. And we spoke on Laudato Si, expressively the very first four broadcasts when I was with Tom analyzing this video, where Pope Francis invited the world leaders and, educational, uh, and educators into Rome for the 14th of May 2020 for this re-education camp they are starting there. <laughs> I call it just that. The preface of this book was written by the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew I of Constantinople. The Corriere della Sera, that's an Italian newspaper, today published a reprint. Quote unquote, Mother Earth is not a Christian term, but comes from the field of natural religions and the new paganism. No, it's not a Christian term. It is a Roman Catholic term, because that is a natural religion. It is a pagan religion, to say. Now, the quote-unquote mother of Christians is not the earth, but Mary. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Please, Tom, <laughs> come yeah, to I'll, my rescue. <laughs> I'll, I'll help you out a little bit. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> this is the indoctrination. It's just incredible. Every Bible-believing Christian knows that the earth is not our mother. And uh, but the papacy is trying to present it as a foregone conclusion that the earth is our mother and we must, you know, revere and reverence and obey our mother. And she's desperately crying out because she's suffering from abuse and filth and garbage and and uh, not enough air, not enough water, not enough oil, not enough energy, not enough this, that, and everything else. And the world is. Just uh, the population of the earth is just unsustainable. The earth is just incapable of uh, supplying the needs of the, the current population in the world. And the, the resources of the world are unevenly distributed. And uh, the Pope needs to put himself in a position to redistribute the world's wealth and the world's resources. In other words, to become the global governor. And the, the, the Orthodox, the Eastern Orthodox Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople obviously agrees with it. So we have uh, the two Roman Catholic cults uh, asserting themselves as the governor of the world. First of all, to name a global crisis, to define what it is, and then to offer a solution for it. And that's going to require a global government. I mean, it's, it's, it's problem, reaction, solution. They create the problem. They uh, make note the of the reaction, yeah. and then they propose the solution. And the direction they're taking the world is obvious to anybody that's paying attention. And, uh, you know, we've all heard of the quote-unquote new world order, and we've all heard about global government, globalization, uh, and, and whose agenda is it? Well, to allude to the point you made originally, it's Satan's agenda. It's Satan's agenda. It's a tool by which he uses the papacy, the man of sin, the son of perdition, in cooperation with all the governments of the world to achieve this global government. And they do it by fear-mongering. Now, we Bible believers... <clears throat> We know that God said, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And we also know that we serve a, an, an all-wise God who would not tell us to be fruitful and multiply and to fill the earth if he did not provide us an earth sufficient to sustain a whole world of people. So this, this thing from beginning to end is designed to destroy man's faith in the God of creation, and to destroy the Bible. You, for, in order for Satan to rule this world under one government, that's what must be done. Destroy the faith of God and put doubt as to his uh, wisdom and knowledge and direction, which is to attack the Bible. <clears throat> now, it's preposterous on its face, 
that the earth is not capable of sustaining a whole world of people. So everything that we're told in the press about uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, dangerous loss of resources, the dangerous uh, deficiency in, in, in energy, air, water, natural resources, uh, is all a lie, an elaborate uh, lie that is repeated by virtually every public speaker. And uh, if we don't take seriously what the Bible says and trust the Lord of glory, the God of creation, we have no choice but to follow along with this global cockamamie lie. And uh, <clears throat> this is the point that's rarely brought out about uh, uh, Pope Francis's nonsense. I mean, they make much ado about this uh, this uh, Mother Earth goddess called Pachamama, and uh, and uh, the Roman Catholics are all upset that the Pope considers other religions than the Roman Catholic religion uh, to be uh, uh, just another form of worshiping the God of creation. When we know perfectly well. They're all idolaters. That's one thing they have all in common is idolatry, which goes back to the passage that Brett uh, quoted before we began. Little children keep you from idols. Now, we can take that to mean any authority in this world that venerates images and idols and bows down and worships images and idols is not uh, followers of Jesus Christ, not followers of the gospel. And it's one thing you find common in every false religion. It's, it's just a, a given. You can take this to the bank. You can trust it with everything you have. That if the religious leaders of the world bow down, if they make and bow down and worship images and idols, they are not the faith of Jesus Christ. And, and no one is more idolatrous than the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. And here they are, the two patriarchs of those two false pagan religions, in dictating to the world what we must do to save, quote-unquote, Mother Earth. It's error built upon error, built upon error, built upon lies, upon lies, upon lies. And the only defense against it is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. It is truth. And we must fight this with truth. And trust me when I tell you, the truth makes far more sense than all the propaganda that you hear in every public venue. Back to you, Yerk. Yes, Tom, thank you very much. And I think there's one word that you just used that I want to exalt on a little bit more because I found it very profound that you used the word that God gave us a world to sustain us. Yeah, Sustainability. That is what God promises to us. I mean, he wouldn't send out the people, as he said to Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives, when they left the ark to go out in the world, multiply and replenish the earth. That's what they were to do. That's what all of mankind since then was to do, not to rub themselves in cities together and all that stuff, as is happening today. In these even becoming mega cities, there are cities of more than 20 million inhabitants for the moment. People here in Belgium can't even imagine that because we are a country of a little bit less than 11 million inhabitants. That would mean there's one city twice the size of the inhabitants of Belgium. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> get a grasp on that. But sustainability, that is a very important word I think you use, Tom. Because in the Bible, we understand, or from the Bible, we understand that God speaks to us and says, be multiplied, be, fruit, be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth. And he will sustain us. He will give us a world that sustains us. And what does the Antichrist talk about? Well, he is just, fancy as he is, developing a new world that is called sustainable development means it yeah, all it, it has to be begins. developed it is not there it has to be developed by ourselves and how are we going to do that well 
CO2 is the big danger and the people are the big danger and this and that and so on and so on. That is sustainable development by the Antichrist. He takes the sustainability of the earth that God created and gave to all of mankind and twists the world around and says, no, 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 there is no sustainability, but there is sustainable development. We have to develop it ourselves. We have to make it or otherwise we are done. I couldn't agree with you more. It's a denial of the faith. Yeah. Denial of the of uh, the God of glory, the God of creation. It's a denial of every of word. It's a denial of every word that God every uh, ever uttered. Yeah, to put it this way. Good. I'm going to continue in the article here. So, Mother Earth is not a Christian term, but comes from the field of natural religions and the new paganism. The quote-unquote mother of Christians is not the Earth, but Mary. Now, of course, the mother of Christians is not Mary. Christians don't have a mother, Christians have a father. The father never talks about a mother, right? That is only the quote-unquote church, the Roman Catholic Church that speaks about that. Now, the makers of the Amazon Synod accuse critics of wanting to carry the pantheistic Mother Earth cult or Gaia cult into the church, as if it wasn't along there already. This is where the author has not the full biblical understanding. This, he writes this from a Roman Catholic point of view, in the uh, conviction that Roman Catholicism is Christianity. That is his stance, not our stance. Yeah? Now, Vatican News, which is an Italian editorial office, is today, in the midst of October 2019, promoting the book with the overwhelming title, The Pope, Rethinking the Life Criteria to Save Life on Earth. That's the book that you see here in the picture. Now, yeah, it's getting, now, now it's getting interesting. Well, well, this little paragraph, Tom, and then please, you, 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 you will probably have a comment to this too. So let me just finish this little paragraph here. The tone fits in with the climate hysteria with which the EU, meaning the European Union, and strong forces behind it, and we all know who those forces are, and Tom is going to elaborate on that in a moment, it wants to enforce deindustrialization and restrictions on individual mobility. And now you got, on, among others, the Americans right by the balls. Restriction of individual mobility? He's gonna take away your horses. Metal right. horses but, for the moment. Yeah. Starting with electromobility, especially Tesla. <laughs> I think if we go down that road, this broadcast will endure for, an, uh, for at least another five or six hours. But I want to hear Tom's comment on what I just read here. Please, Tom. Well, you can see by the language the Pope is putting himself in a position to dictate to the world how it should use its resources. And uh, to come up with a new body of laws to, to help preserve the Earth. And of course, they want they very deindustrialization. That is the the, the uh, destruction of industrialization in the world. No more factories. They consume too much energy and they uh, emit too many toxins into the environment. And uh, we're going back to the Stone Age, basically. I mean, it was the Industrial Age that came about as a, as a, as a result of the Protestant Reformation. You know, when when people were liberated from the tyranny of Rome and all of a sudden they had to do with their own resources. They did, not everything was paid to the Roman Catholic Church. And so they had their own resources. They sent their children to college rather than send all their money to Rome in indulgences and, and uh, one thing and another. The Pope no longer had control of their purse strings. And so the people used their own resources to educate their children, and they learned science, mathematics, and, and the natural sciences, and learned how to make things to make our lives more enjoyable and our labor more uh, uh, tolerable. And uh, because of that, then we had population explosion. So the papacy is literally, by this language criticizing the Protestant Reformation. 
Okay, it's it's called modernization. The word modernization is another word that alludes to the changes that took place on the earth after the Protestant Reformation. And so the Pope is literally saying that since the Protestant Reformation, the earth has gone the wrong way. And now the earth itself is threatened by what evolved out of the Protestant Reformation. It's a con when you when the Pope criticizes Protestantism, he's pro he's criticizing the Bible and the God of the Bible. You see, this is a current recurring uh, theme throughout this entire document. It's a wholesale, although tongue in cheek, uh, clandestine attack on the Bible, the God of the Bible, and those who worship and read. Uh, worship God and read the Bible. That's the Protestants. And so the creation, as the Pope sees it, of Protestantism was industrialization and modernization. And uh, the Pope regards it as ab abject rebellion against the authority of the Pope. And so now that the Protestants have renounced their Protestantism by believing not any longer that the Pope is the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, and they all now believe that the, that the Antichrist is a future individual that hasn't come upon the world scene yet, that won't come until just before Christ returns, they have exonerated the papacy. Because always before, the first uh, you know 1,500 years of Christian history, the Protestants and there were always Protestants protesting the papacy, calling him what he is, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the little horn of Daniel. And uh, now that there is no longer any Protestantism in the world, since they all believe in a future Antichrist that hasn't come yet, they have exonerated the papacy. The Protestants have literally, because they now believe in futurism, have undermined their own foundation, which means that their rebellion against the papacy beginning in 1517 A.D. was a massive mistake. And the Protestants, every time they say that the Antichrist is future, they, they reiterate their error, and they exonerate the papacy. Now, this has gone on since the early 1800s, the Protestants have been renouncing their belief that the papacy and every pope in succession since the first pope to the very last pope are all the Antichrist of Scripture, history, and prophecy. They no longer say that. They believe in a future Antichrist, so they've exonerated the whole history of the papacy. And now the Pope has every moral platform upon which to stand and say the Protestant Reformation was wrong. They've admitted it with their own mouth. They admit it every Sunday morning when they get together in church. And they talk about the Antichrist, or they talk about the future 70th week of Daniel. They cannot possibly continue to believe that the Pope is the Antichrist. And that was the grounds upon which Luther left the church and all all the Protestant reformers and all of the EU, what is now the EU today, abandoned the papacy in protest, and they formed their own governments. They quit paying all their taxes to the church. They kept their own money, educated their children, and brought about the Protestant Reformation and the industrialization of the world that made life much more tolerable. And uh, the Pope says it's all a mistake. Just ask a Protestant. They'll tell you now. We made a mistake. The Pope is not the Antichrist. It's a future individual. So the Pope now has the moral authority over the governments of the world to say the Protestants with their own mouths have renounced their own Protestantism. Therefore, the Protestant Reformation was an error, and everything that came out of the Protestant Reformation was an error. Industrialization was an error. And now we've got this filthy, polluted planet. We've got a, a, a destitution of, of, of natural resources, human resources, air, water, everything, energy. And we've got to return to 
the papacy. You see, this isn't rocket science. This isn't hard to, to understand if you understand a little bit about history. So uh, futurism has destroyed Protestantism. The Pope says, okay, now all the Protestants understand the Pope is not the Antichrist. The papacy is not the Antichrist. Never was the Antichrist. Never will be the Antichrist. It must be the Savior of the world. It's the Vicar of Christ, the replacement of the Son of God. We now have this global crisis of pollution and lack of sustainability as a direct result of the Protestant Reformation. So Protestantism's got to go, and everything that came out of it. And we need a new world handbook on and a new world uh, global re-education to get us back to the good old days when the Pope ruled the world, okay, and made all the laws, and the civil laws enforced Roman Catholic canon law upon its citizenry. According to Roman Catholic canon law, that is the only rightful purpose of a civil government, to impose upon its citizenry Roman Catholic canon law and to make them all servants and vassals and subjects of the so-called Holy Roman Pontiff. So we're returning to the Middle Ages. Dark and the Pope ages. is condemning dark ages and he's he's condemning industrialization, which is just another word for Protestantism. He's condemning uh, false religion which means Roman Catholicism and idolatry in every form is acceptable, but Bible-believing Christianity, Protestantism, is the scourge of the earth. And everything that comes out of Pope Francis's mouth is geared to emphasize that notion, that Protestantism is what's killing Mother Earth. Okay, and all, all the beliefs and practices that evolved from the Protestant Reformation, that is, Republican forms of government must go, constitutional governments must go, and every government that upholds anything other than Roman Catholic canon law. Now, Roman Catholic canon law is going to become the, 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 uh, the law of the land. Uh, that's the Rome, that's Rome's intent. How far God is going to let it go, I don't know. But uh, we don't go out shooting Roman Catholics. We don't go out killing popes. We don't go out doing this and that. Remember, our warfare is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual powers. And that spiritual power is Satan, who seeks to rule the whole world and take over Christ's rightful kingdom. So first of all, we have to destroy futurism. Futurism, the belief that the Antichrist is a future individual, that must be destroyed. That is not the truth. That is the lie of the Roman Catholic Church. Now, if you find a Protestant pastor that's still talking about a future 70th week of Daniel, he's part of the problem. Futurism has to be destroyed. We have to return to the Protestant belief that the papacy and every pope in succession from the first to the last is that man of sin. And we, we it, it, that's uh, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And history reveals that that power that replaced the Caesars that was in power at the time when Jesus walked the streets of Jerusalem when that restrainer was taken out of the way, the Roman, the, the Roman Caesars, the Roman government, when it fell, the man of sin stood up. The man of sin, the son of perdition, was revealed. And uh, he's a worse tyrant than Rome ever thought of being. And he's governed the world throughout the entire Christian era. That's what the Protestant reformers believed. That's what they taught. They, to the man, every Protestant believer understood that the papacy is the Antichrist and fulfills all the Bible prophecies regarding the Antichrist. They weren't looking to the distant future for an Antichrist. Neither were they looking to the distant past of the old pagan Roman Empire for the Antichrist. 
The papacy was the Antichrist, and they were certain about it, just as I am, just as Yerk is, just as Brett is, just as Michael is. And it's the truth. And, and all these documents and all these encyclicals, Ladasso C, and, and all these other things Caritas are used and to... Do, yeah, Caritas and Veritate and uh, Rerum Navarum. We could name them all. It would, you, they're all Latin. You don't know what they mean. But the papacy has been expounding and building this return to global government by the Pope for centuries. And... Uh, Rome hasn't departed from her given direction. That is, that they believe they have the divine right to rule this world. The papacy regards itself as the king of kings and the lord of lords. And there's only one legitimate government in this world. That's the one that acknowledges the papacy as the god of this world and obeys him implicitly and imposes his doctrines, his laws upon every man, woman, and child on the planet. And any government that does not do that is a de facto government according to Roman definition and may be overthrown at the first available opportunity. Now you understand the, the, the impetus behind every war. When the papacy determines that a government is de facto, that is a government in fact, but not a de jure government that's serving the Pope, <coughs> then at the earliest opportunity, that government is to be destroyed. You know, regime change. Now you understand the wars of the world. Now they don't tell you this on Fox News. <laughs> they don't tell you they don't tell you this on CNN. They don't tell you this on MSNBC. They don't tell you this in any mainstream tele, telecast. You're not to know this. This is the great secret how the papacy rules this world. And he commands the militaries of the world to go to war against certain governments that do not obey the pope. And there's no government in the world that imposes the papal will upon other nations than the United, the United States of America. The United States of America is the Pope's battle axe. Whenever the Pope needs help around the world to extend his power and authority, the, Ro the, the Roman Catholic American government and military saddle up and go to war. So, uh, and you've no doubt heard, if you're a regular listener to Yerk, you've heard how the First World War was a papal crusade. You've heard how the Second World War was a papal crusade. You've heard how the Vietnam War was a papal crusade. And uh, the current war on terror is a papal crusade. And uh, the papacy through the governments of the world, the most powerful of which is the United States, is simply whipping the rest of the world into compliance with papal authority. The United States of America has never fought a war for its own independence. The, the United States of America and its government and its military has always fought wars that ultimately benefit the papacy. And again, you're never going to hear this on Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, or any of the talking heads in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. This is the, you know, this is the great secret <clears throat> everybody knows the press is controlled. Even people who denounce, uh, you know, the so-called conspiracy theorists are now privy to the fact that the that the that the press is controlled, tightly controlled. So there's no disputing about that anymore. And uh, I just wish the world would come right along with what the Protestant reformers taught. There's no better use of your time than to read the authorized King James Version of the Bible, but, I'd, but in addition to that, the writings of the Protestant Reformers. If you want to get the truth about what's going on in this world today, you have to first understand what Christians, true Bible-believing Christians, have believed all throughout the centuries. 
that Jesus is the Christ and the papacy is the Antichrist. Back to you, Yerk. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. Um, I was going to uh, into a little bit into this last sentence here that I just read, but you already did it. I just want to ex uh, expound it. Uh, for a short moment on this deindustrialization you said very correctly industrialization is an achievement of the reformation you know this is why we lived in the quote unquote dark ages we had no technical progress that came with the time of the reformation just when the Reformation was in its baby shoes, really baby shoes, in the middle of the 15th century, the book press was invented. And that was the start of the industrialization that happened then later on, especially in the, in the beginning of the 19th century. From the beginning of the 19th until the uh, midst of the 20th century, 150 years, we have had an industrialization, we have had a progress that was unseen before in the history of mankind in this world. And that is all because we were made free, to a certain extent, of the bondage of Rome that kept us down, that kept all of mankind down up to that moment. Industrialization started to give us the, um, the steam engine. It gave us the locomotives, the trains, and from the trains on, later on, it gave us the individual mobility by the car that was invented by um, uh, Mr. Mercedes or somewhere there. And you have the inventors of the combustion engine, uh, Rudolf Diesel, Otto, who invented these engines. And then later on, you had electro, uh, electric, uh, electric motors or electric engines. Um, but all that is a, re uh, is a result of the Protestant Reformation. And that is so important to understand it because the author says, without even fully understanding what he writes here, I'm sure he doesn't fully understand what he writes here, he says that this tone fits in with the climate hysteria with which the EU and strong forces behind it want to enforce the deindustrialization, so meaning going back to the Dark Ages, as Tom called it correctly, and restrictions on individual mobility. It is not only restrictions on individual mobility, dear listener. It is also restrictions of individuality. That's right. We are not to be individual anymore. We are all streamlined in one way. And that we have to do, of course, with mobility, meaning we can only use buses and trains means organized mass transportation in these mega cities that are coming up. There will be no traffic anymore. There will be no private cars anymore. You will not have the possibility to go from A to B to C to D with your own uh, transportation, of, transportation of your uh, choice. Even now that you think, oh, but now I'm going to buy an EV and it's all going to be all right. No, it's not going to be all right. They take that away too. You will have to be streamlined, streamlined and your individuality is completely taken away. And if you do not conform to the rules and regulations of the Roman Catholic Church, that of course they don't tell you that it's that, it is, you just obey the law, huh? you know. The Germans in the second, um, in the Third Reich, in that time, when they were persecuting all the people they were persecuting and doing all the stuff they did, they were just doing, obeying the law, you know? You're just obeying the law, but your individuality is completely taken away, and if you don't agree, there will be a concentration camp for you already. The place will be there. And with that individuality taken away, and with that Individuality, it, it goes so much farther. It goes so far that you have an individual relationship with your personal Savior, Jesus Christ, of which the Antichrist says that that is a dangerous thing and it should be abolished. You are not allowed to have an individual relationship with your, with your Savior and Lord of Lords and King of Kings, Jesus Christ with the Savior and Creator of the world. That is forbidden in the terms of Roman Catholic canon law. 
So when we analyze this sentence very, very deep, it says so much more than it does on the outside when you just read about restrictions on individual mobility. It says actually there will be restrictions of individuality that, and those restrictions will go so far that individuality will be termed as terrorism. If you want to be an individual, if you think you think for yourself, or if you say you think for yourself, you're a terrorist. Because you don't think like the government imposes you to think. That's what's behind this all. And that is going back into the dark ages. They were so dark because the word of God was not in the world, because the light of the word of God was not in the world. And that's what they are taking away since 500 years. That's what the Jesuits have been working on from the beginning of their foundation in the mid of the, 15, uh, of the 16th century. There's so much more between the lines what we are reading here. I hope that we can ever go through all of that, but this is, you know, Ooh, a box of Pandora. Yeah, please, Brett. Glad to yes, hear you. So, okay, so we're making a transition into the unknown territory of history. And it's not just regular history, it's suppressed history. It's history that we've never been told. It's history of the church that has never been revealed unless you go out and study it and dig it up yourself. Right, Eric? Right, Tom? Right, yeah, Michael? that's right. That's exactly right. We have to go out there and find these books and start studying them. Like, it is our only way to get a grasp on what's really going on. It's amazing. And it's when you go out and find absolutely those absolutely fascinating. When you go out and find those books and you begin to read what people believed 500 years ago, you'll discover that the world once before got sick and fed up with papal tyranny. That's right. When the Bible began to be printed on the printing presses and everybody had the ability to own their own copy of the Bible, to read with their own eyes, they recognized universally they all recognized that the, the scriptures were talking about the papacy. And they, they rebelled. All of Europe, the EU, what is now called the EU, rebelled. And we know that there were some countries in Europe that remained loyal to the papacy. But even those countries rebelled against the papacy. They would allow the Pope to continue to be the head of their religion, but they wanted no more papal interference in their civil governments. Even the Roman Catholic countries rebelled against the papacy and demanded that the Pope butt out of their own national governments. They were content to leave the Pope to be what he claimed to be the the, the head of their religion, the Bishop of Rome, but they did no longer want any meddling of the papacy in their civil affairs. And uh, so that deliberated all of Europe against the Pope. And there was one time, the Pope Pius IX, not so long ago in the 1800s, the middle 1800s, said, quote, I am Pope nowhere in the world but the United States of America. And there was even t rumblings uh, uh, underneath the surface that the Vatican was planning on moving to the United States of America. All of Europe had rebelled against the papacy. Well, what do we see today? We see all of EU, their, their, their national governments have been destroyed and replaced with a central government, and now they're fighting papal proxy wars and demanding a global government. EU has never been so Catholic how easy the papacy turned the tides on the Protestant Reformation. And how they did it? Through futurism. The belief that the papacy isn't the Antichrist, it's a single individual. Do you see how damaging futurism is? And it's taught in all the Protestant and evangelical churches. And until that lie is silenced in the churches... We have no hope of defending ourselves against a global government headed up by the papacy. We've lost, because we now believe in futurism, we've lost the battle. 
Oh, another comment, Tom. I think that even in the uh, social studies classes in the schools, they have taught futurism through, uh, through Nostradamus. I remember... In our civics class, when I was growing up in Washburn High School in Minneapolis, they actually had this film about Nostradamus, and they were teaching futurism in it. So, so futurism it's not all just its church, it's state too, yeah. That's exactly right. Church and state. Now, before someone takes us out of context, neither Brett nor I nor anyone here is advocating that Nostradamus was anything but a false prophet. Oh. Okay? I want that clear. Pagan to the core. When it, when it comes to prophecy, Nostradamus is no prophet. You know, he, he's, a, he's a prophet of the New World Order. Yeah. He's a liar, That's and right. uh, he served Satan. He, <clears throat> he did not serve the God of glory. And... Uh, uh, you know, even in all my discussions on amateur radio years ago about uh, about the Antichrist and about prophecy and one thing and another, Christians wanted to talk about Nostradamus. Yep. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, that's just how far Christianity has gone in Mysticism. this country. Yep, that's just right. Just completely astray. And uh, and it's because of futurism. People no, don't, no longer understand the Bible because of futurism. And because of futurism, they have no desire to study history. Okay, they're all thinking about the future. Well, history has already uncovered the mystery. History has already documented the, his, the, the mystery of who is the Antichrist. It is, was, and always will be the papacy. It is today, it will be tomorrow. And it has ruled over Christianity for the virtually the entire Christian era, except for the first few centuries and the transitional period between the Caesars and the Papal Caesar, between the Roman Empire and the so-called Holy Roman Empire, which is not holy. And so we, we, we've already got the answers. We, we, we don't need any Absolutely. help from our modern-day so-called Protestant evangelical pastors. They're all out to lunch. They're all on the side of Rome. They're all teaching futurism. It's a lie. And it's killed the Protestant Reformation. <laughs> and the papacy just laughing its diabolical fanny off. I wonder, you guys, if we were to take a microphone and go out and interview these pastors, what they would say about the Jesuit order. Well, first of all, most of them never heard of the Jesuit. Yeah. And those who have, if they can even spell Jesuit, don't have a clue what they're all about. I'm talking about the United States, not not Europe, because I think Europe is far ahead in that department than the United States. That could very well be, but it's an interesting question. We've been hit really hard because our institutions have taught us lies from day one. I mean, start with 1776. There's your firewall. So, yeah, I, it's absolutely incredible. And that's Mother Earth. I mean, you search Mother Earth in the Bible and you find three verses and the last one nails it. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. There's your Mother Earth. The little horn of Daniel, the man of sin. Right? Well, that mother is uh, the mother of all error, the yeah. mother of idolatry, and it's Mystery Babylon the Great. And, uh, uh, you know, Babylon just moved to Rome. It's the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church is the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. That's what the Protestant reformers believed and taught. They all agreed, and they were all perfectly correct. Biblically correct. That's right. Perfectly correct. Biblically correct. It's one and the same. Well, 
Well, I think maybe it's time that we let Michael come to the mic for a moment. Oh, I got the same idea at this moment. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. See how I can read so, your mind. It huh? was so it was it was uh, the first time. It was so silent, and I said, "Okay, then I might step in without interfering." Um, you see, I think it's just uh, just a thing that mm, how to say it. Uh, I came across with the, with the idea of the so-called climate conference, which is uh, every year in another town and this and that. And you see, it's just politics that they cannot agree upon anything so that in the end, in the very end, one will stand up all dressed in white <laughs> with a Mitra's head and will say, okay, you cannot agree on anything and there will be one man who can save the world like uh, the, the the man who saved the world yeah and uh, he will be on all front pages on the time magazine and newsweek and this and that and the one who will save the planet yeah so and 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 this i think it's just a big big chess game like brzezinski the grand chess board and in the end, uh, you will see that there will be a king of this world, which, which is the Pope, for all religions, for all mankind, female, male, or which gender you might choose. The problem is just that these politics are playing their dirty games and they have been paid for it. Very, very highly paid for that. <clears throat> and so all these conferences and politics and uh, television reviews and uh, f uh, uh, news flashes and, and whatsoever are just distraction that in the background someone is pulling upon the strings, which is the Vatican, which is, if you so, <clears throat> so mean, the, the, the godfather, the so-called godfather, who can then pull the strings and then present himself as the savior of the earth, and then it can very rightfully set in see uh, take place in his seat in his holy seat, uh, so that he can th from then on rule the whole world because he has saved them. He has saved the the the. The inhabitants of the earth, in his opinion, he has saved them from the ruthless and reckless. Uh, politicians and so I think it's just a, just a game and, and people don't get it because people believe in the matrix out there they believe that all that they are seeing on the television and the radio and the newspapers they believe the lie because the lie is so great, it's so enormous for centuries raised this lie uh, it's got it's so big and enormous the people have no imagination that there could be anything wrong in that because you cannot fool all the people but the problem is, it's it's no no lie in the outside world, but the lie lies within. The lie is a spiritual lie. That's my my problem. You see, we we are also we are own, we are facing the antichrist in the in the in the name of the papacy, which is absolutely correct. But the Bible also states that everyone is the antichrist in First John two twenty two. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. And in 1 John 4, 3, you read, Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. And so the majority of the inhabitants of this earth are already in the spirit of Antichrist, and they will welcome their new leader, the Pope whatsoever, or the Antichrist whatsoever, because they are already in the spirit. You see, they are awaiting his new master on this earth, someone who can finally it identify himself and will be an idol of all Antichrists, because there will sometime, I don't know if I'm get that old, there will someone who, who claims to unite all the people of this world, and be an idol for them. They can pray like the golden calf, which Aaron has then um, erected. And and so I think it's all about that. The, the, the Pope is the high priest. It's always the high priest is always the opponent of Jesus Christ because they want to have materialism. They want to have this worldly power. 
They want to rule the world. They want to rule the people. They don't want to serve anyone. They want to rule. Yeah, that's my two cents. Yeah, this is a very good point because that's a confirmation of the words that Jesus Christ spoke when he said, <clears throat> I have come in my Father's name and you received me not and yeah. someone else is coming in his own name and him you will receive. And yeah. that's exactly the papacy. Yeah, mm -hmm. very good point you made there, Michael. And I think it is about time to wrap this broadcast up. We didn't read many pages, of course, as normally, but I think it was quite interesting what we spoke about today. So I want to leave... Uh, Tom, for the final comment of today's reading, and then uh, we go to, yeah, Michael just had his word, I think. I have had my word right now. I'm going to leave it to Tom, and then for Brett to wrap it up, please. Okay, well, it's my pleasure and blessing and privilege to be here and to discuss these most important matters and to uh, straighten up the record and to bring people to the understanding that... Uh, we don't need any new understanding to defeat this papal antichrist. All we need to do is to return to the beliefs and teachings of the Protestant reformers. That is the authorized King James Version of the Bible for English-speaking people. Return to the Bible. And then we'll have all of our errors and misconceptions uh, corrected. The Protestant reformers set us about uh, restoring Christ to his rightful throne. And now the papacy has usurped once again that rightful throne and has made himself a global governor and is now preaching and dictating to the world how it should sustain itself. When God put us on a perfectly capable world of sustaining a whole world of people, stop believing lies. And if you want to know the truth, it's in the authorized King James Version of the Bible. Back to you, York. I'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you, Tom. I want to give it to Brett to close it up for today. Thank you guys so much. It's been wonderful to have this discussion and reading uh, from the Antichrist's own mouth, uh, what he's speaking these days, so that we can break it down and, and make it uh, easy for our brethren to join us and, and to join in and uh, get an idea of, uh, you know, the historical truth, because that's what this is all about. So we'll catch up with you next time. God bless. Bye-bye for now. I see the great apostasy. I see the desolation of Christendom. I see the smoke and ruins. I see the reign of monsters. I see those vice gods that Gregory the Seventh, that Innocent the Third, that Boniface the Eighth, that Alexander the Sixth, that Gregory the Thirteenth, that Pius the Ninth. I see their long succession. I hear their insufferable blasphemies. I see their abominable lives. I see them worshipped by blinded generations, bestowing hollow benedictions bartering, lying indulgences, creating a paganized Christianity. I see their liveried slaves, their shaven priests, their celibate confessors. I see the infamous confessional, the ruined woman, the murdered innocents. I hear the lying absolutions, the dying groans, I hear the cries of the victims, I hear the anathemas, the curses, the thunders of the interdicts. I see the racks, I see the dungeons, I see the stakes. I see that inhumane inquisition, those fires of Smithfield, those butcheries of St. Bartholomew, that Spanish armada, those unspeakable dragonades, that endless train of wars that dreadful multitude of massacre. I see it all. And in the name of the ruin it has brought in the church and in the world, in the name of the truth it has denied, the temple it has defiled, the God it has blasphemed, the souls it has destroyed, in the name of the millions it has deluded, the millions it has slaughtered, the millions 
it has damned. With holy confessors, with noble reformers, with innumerable martyrs, with the saints of ages, I denounce it as the masterpiece of Satan, as the body and soul and essence of Antichrist.